It's been about two years since people have taken rather extraordinary measures for their health, for hygiene, like wearing a mask like this one, washing hands far more regularly, avoiding a lot of direct contact with people. A lot can be said about all of these things that have happened, but I was really curious specifically as this moment of highest hygiene perhaps ever in the history of humanity had an effect on other things. I wanted to explore that with you today. I'm Luke and this is Plumothy. My curiosity in this question was sparked by realizing that, uh, hey, in attempting to prevent the transmission of COVID, we may actually also be preventing the transmission of other diseases. I guess that's kind of obvious, but I was curious if there were actually statistics about this. And there are. There are both medical and scientific and newspaper articles that have been discussing the fact that cases of influenza, as well as other more minor and common diseases, are incredibly low. Here in this chart, we can see that normally about 30% of the population at the height of any given flu season here in the, in the winter is when people will actually catch the flu. But um, it's just gone down so dramatically low the past couple of years because due in part to public policy as well as individuals making the choice to keep their hygiene high and their transmission low, it's really, it's remarkable. I can't think of another time this has ever happened in the whole history of humanity that we've actually all so collectively tried to prevent the transmission of disease. The consequence for so many of us trying to prevent COVID is that we've pushed influenza to be almost non-existent. And that's really amazing. As we continue to open up society, this may change, but now that we have gotten used to a higher level of hygiene, we may simply choose to make decisions that affect our own personal hygiene and the hygiene of those around us in ways that may be good for civilization. Allow me to reflect on an anecdote of when I first observed this kind of effect. I first moved to Japan about 10 years ago, and I remember the first time I was not just out on the street, but in the subway seeing people wearing masks. And I found this to be startling and frightening. I was like, oh no, is it one of those epidemics like SARS or something? What's what's going on? Well, in the earlier part of the 21st century, there were outbreaks of epidemic level diseases like SARS and MERS. And these diseases spreading around Eastern Asia created the habit of wearing masks to protect oneself. And because of this, it ended up becoming more normalized to actually wear a mask like this one. Now, uh, people have been doing this obviously over the past couple of years because they don't want to catch the disease that causes the pandemic. Uh, and that's, of course, perfectly reasonable. And they're also doing it, of course, to follow the laws of the land, which is also reasonable to do. What I discovered, though, when I started asking Japanese people about, like, why are people wearing masks? I found out that it was often because such people would probably later have a cold or they uh, might be afraid of catching a cold. But if they had a cold, they were actually wearing the mask so that, that they, in case they coughed or they sneezed, they wouldn't touch their own hands and that they would reduce the chance of infecting friends, co-workers, or just people on the street. It's a very interesting and kind of polite thing to do. Now, back in, say, uh, America, where, where I'm from, wearing a mask like that before, you know, this past couple years, um, just for doing something like that would be so strange. It's, um, but now it's because it's been so normalized in society around the world, for example, most of us are brought up well by our parents and taught to wash our hands before eating and so forth. And this is something that just wasn't a tradition uh, in the past. But thanks to the understanding of the germ theory of disease, which is rather recent in the history of medical science, we know that disease can be spread by germs, by bacteria and viruses and so forth. Things that we can transmit through uh, contact, either with direct physical contact with our hands or through um, respiration. Before that, there are all kinds of crazy theories about miasma, about some kind of bad air that people would inhale and that's what would cause disease. Not, for example, drinking water that might be polluted with bacteria. Today we take it for granted that we understand that sort of thing. But um, until a couple years ago, although people generally were of course hygienic, um, they weren't nearly as hygienic as today. So when this is all over, if it's ever over, 
it's probably a good thing that this has been normalized. So that if someone wants to make the individual choice, even if it's not required, to wear something like this, if the individual has a cold or the flu and just doesn't want to spread it when outside the house or in whatever situation, that'll be okay. Equally, if we have direct physical contact with people, even shaking hands, it might not be a bad idea to use a little hand sanitizer. It doesn't hurt. It's probably something that won't offend people anymore as it might have in the past. And that change in the way that we perceive those kinds of interactions, these little things we can do for hygiene, ultimately, may be a good thing for civilization in just a really broad way. I mean, looking back at civilization, we've all heard about how the bad hygiene of, say, the Middle Ages is what led to the Black Plague. And no doubt, poor hygiene in all kinds of periods of history has led to great outbreaks of disease. Bronze Age society, for example, was one of the first times that large collections of people were in the same place for long periods of time. And also, there were livestock, animals, and we would probably consider the conditions that these people lived in to be abhorrent today. Living with their own livestock right inside the same houses and buildings, incredibly filthy is probably what it would seem like to us. And no doubt every time in history when people have lived together very closely, especially with animals without, of course, the germ theory of disease, the conditions were met for the evolution of new diseases and for even massive epidemic outbreaks. It's possible that this was even one of the causes of the end of Bronze Age civilization. Every time a society has taken steps to improve hygiene, to provide clean drinking water, to individuals encouraging the habit of washing hands before eating, it really seems to have made a difference thus far. So it seems that in the future as we go on, if individuals like to use devices such as this or hand sanitizer to improve their hygiene, to prevent transmission of disease, well, it's probably a good thing for all of us. Well, at least that's how I see it from this point of view. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. Wale'ikum.